The best. What's going on, oh, man? Hey there, coach. How you doing? Late arriving. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Tried. All right. Coach, is, is, there, is there anything, you know, DeAndre seems to know football really well inside and out, but yep. is there anything conceptually about this offense that he's has to pick up a little bit better or you've seen him pick up a little bit better? No, I, this program? in terms of the chalkboard, no. I mean, I, I think the way he studies, I mean, he's serious about his business. I mean, football is football is football. Everybody runs four verticals. Everybody runs curl flat. Everybody's running a lot of the same things. So from a conceptual standpoint, no, I, I don't think there's any issues with, with – how he learns, or what he's studying, or the offense, or the system. We just got to be better, you know. Um, you know, and, and that that's on us as coaches. You know, we, we just got to make sure that we're better. We gotta, again, you know, football's an 11-man game. We got to make sure that that all 10 guys, whether it's maybe DeAndre on this play, or whether it's Quez on this play, or whether it's the you know Alec Eberle on this play, or whatever. We we, we just the, the, the consistency, making sure from overall that we're all 11 of us at the right time are executing, doing what we're supposed to do. With how important is it to execute the RPO correctly in this offense? I mean, are, are you guys trying to drill him on, on letting him know? Yeah, that, that, that's every week. You know, every week, there's, you know, whether it's a certain player we want to put in conflict or a certain guy that we want to attack or a certain guy that we want to manage to kind of help aid in the run game. You know, a, a lot of times, you know, in terms of RPO, people uh, make it a little bit more than it is. You know, really, at the end of the day, it, it's a way to – it's run protection. You know, more than anything else. We're trying to make sure that we're even numbers in the box, where we keep this thing five on five, we keep it six on six. Um, you know, in, in terms of run perimeter decisions, were there some versus Miami we'd like to have back? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we probably left, you know, 20, 30, 40 free yards out there on the football field. But again, that, that's every week, got to improve. Got to improve every week. What were the goals during bye week? What did you want to accomplish with, with the offense? Yeah. I think really more than anything else is, you know, offensively, especially up front, we're beat up. So you, you've got to do a great job of still improving techniques, fundamentals, you know, really getting back to kind of fall camp basics again. Um, not that you don't do techniques and fundamentals every day, but just going back and reiterating the things from the first six weeks that we've struggled with. So, you know, trying to just self-improvement more than anything else on top of, you know, managing health and making sure that we're prepared to go do what we need to do for the last half of the season. Going back to watching the film, I mean, in the, in the run game against Miami, did it feel like there was progress or did it look like there was Absolutely. Progress? You know, especially as well as those guys have stopped the run and continue to stop the run, you know, I, I felt like they were, especially with, you know, kind of a last-minute change in the offensive line rotation again with Landon being out, you know, I, I thought those guys did a really serviceable job in the run game. And we just got to make sure that, you know, I, I think the story of last game is more about us not finishing the job you know, than it is we didn't run the ball or didn't do this or didn't do that. Um, you know, we, we, we just didn't go finish the job and stay locked in. The last few weeks you've had Brady Scott flipping back and forth between left tackle and right tackle. Mm -hmm. How tough is it for a guy to, to do that? Yeah, I mean, it, not only is it tough for him, and again, hats off to him, you know, how much that, how hard that guy works, um, you know, how important it is to him, how he practices every day. but. Not only is it hard on him individually, you know, it, it's hard on that unit. But you know, we don't get to make those choices. You know, you're you're there, there's a hand that you're dealt, and you go play it. You know, sometimes you get a offsuit three and a four, and you, you got to go play. You got to go gamble. You know, and so uh, you know, we we've got to put the five best guys out there, all right, to ensure that we have a chance to run the football and protect the quarterback. What do you think tempo gives you when y'all go fast like that? I, I think at the end of the day, number one, it, it limits the defensive play caller. You know, in terms of if he knows that on the very next play this thing could be snapped in 10, 12 seconds, you're a lot less likely to dial up a certain pressure, something exotic. So I think it helps limit their call sheet in terms of tempo, knowing that the, the premise is going to be getting our cleats in the dirt and getting our eyes in the right place. Uh, I think it limits the play caller. I think, number two, I think when we're where we need to be from a, a program standpoint, from a, a program conditioning standpoint, I think sometimes that when you are physically outmatched, by making it a game of attrition and conditioning, um, it, that makes you a little more apt and able to run the football successfully, especially in the back half of drives, back half of the second quarter and fourth quarter, you know. And I think it limits pictures for the quarterback, you know. And so that, that, that's just one more way. And you see it every week. You see it in the NFL. I mean, you see all the teams that are trying to pick up pace, you know, to limit defense. Because in the NFL at that next level, there's so much defense. They got so right. much more time, and there's guys getting paid to not bust. You think that's the best way for you to run the football? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, I mean, you go back and you look at Coach Taggart's track record. I think he's always run the ball incredibly well, no matter where he's been since he's been an up-tempo spread guy. You know, in my life, 
you know, even places where we weren't great up front, you know, we have always run the ball statistically pretty well. So, um, I, I, do I absolutely know beyond a shadow of a doubt that, dude, there's a million ways to run the football. You know, Wisconsin will tell you there are ways the best to do it, and the spread one back no huddle teams will say, you know, keeping them all out there and, and you know, limiting pictures for the O line is the best way to do it. So, in the NFL right now, they're having that argument. You know, you got teams that run mid zone every play and pack bodies in there, and you got teams like the Chiefs that are spread one back, and you know, so million ways to move the football. How good can you be at doing what you do? You know, and that's where we got to improve. The double, the double pass when you go back and look at it was it executed the way that that you wanted it executed. Other than the fact that the football was six inches not to the referee's liking, yeah. You know, um, you know, I mean, are, are there? Do we wish that ball was on a back tip of a pad as opposed to his face mask? I mean, it, 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 there's a million things that, that you want to just throw yourself off a building about. But, yeah, I uh, that would have been pretty if it can. All right, thank you, guys.